Hi Tarot Bumblebees, it's Ethany, welcome back to my channel or hello if you are brand new here. Now I had to go to Australia last minute back in March and there was some family stuff going on there and there's still family stuff going on there but one of the positive things that came away from that experience was that I got to pick up some Blue Angel Oracle and Tarot decks and they're really not that easy to find here and they're much more expensive here than they are back in Australia. So I bought home four and I've got six in total to show you. Two of them actually I purchased here at a local store in the lower mainland here called Reflections Books. If you don't know them, you should go check them out. They are amazing. I'll put all their information in the description box below. This was one of them that I got from uh, I purchased from Reflections and then there's four decks that I purchased whoa, nearly smacked myself in the face with it while I was in Australia and I mean like they were really reasonably priced even though they weighed a ton to bring home thank goodness for international baggage allowance um, I don't have uh, I used to have like tons of Blue Angel decks in my collection um, I was pretty vocal about being pretty disappointed that there was a lot of there was AI in especially a couple of their decks so I was like oh gosh but there were some I really wanted to get because I absolutely love the creators so I was like yeah well you know I just won't buy the AI deck so I will swap over cameras and take you through these decks and let's see what I brought home from Australia okay so we'll start with the medieval feathers tarot deck and the box is really beautiful. These boxes are always really, really well done. They're really sturdy. So we like that in a, in a box design for sure. So it's quite big. So I'm going to have to pop that over here. And we have the guidebook. So this is by... Artwork and concept by Alejandro Razan and text by Jay Riviera. And so it's actually quite a big guidebook. And as you can see, it is based on the Tarot de Marse. Okay, so we have... And then we have the extra information of the different type of feather that is actually in the, the card. So you get the 10 of coins, upright meaning, reverse meaning, and the feather. So that one is the black headed gulls feather. Sorry if you can hear Apollo who is again at my feet. So it's really chunky. It's a, it's a really, really chunky book. Okay, a little bit of information and then inspiration, uses for the deck, the title, interpretive techniques, okay, the court cards, so just a bit of information about the feathers and then some card spreads and then we jump into the cards. So it's, it's quite a good... Um, guidebook it's quite thick too so lovely full color guidebook now we move into the cards so the cards are larger than a standard tarot deck and they look like a tarot deck inside a tarot deck <laughs> with the border I really love the antique gold edging I think it's really beautiful and so we have keywords on both sides so freedom and then if you reverse that we have evasive and I think for me that's one thing that I struggle with even though there are lots of decks that have this and the you know the Thoth very famously has this I struggle I struggle with with the actual um keywords being on the card but the, the cards are beautiful. I think this would work really, really well for somebody who, you know, really loves the Tarot de Marseille. 
and maybe you know is a bit of a bird <laughs> is a bird person um and also someone who wants to work with like the um the idea of these messages from heaven so it is this mix of very medieval as you can see um images i love that death card very cool and these color pops of color sometimes with these feathers so i'm not going to go through all of these cards like this is like the house of god emancipation instead of the tower um this is lightning so there's a few changes here in the cards but I think this would definitely be a deck that works for a lot of people. This is one of the extra cards. This is the Queer and Self Embodiment. Um, and now we move on to the Pip. And as you can see, we start getting to the very classic Tarot de Marse, um, shapes and placements of the actual cards themselves. And then, oh, <coughs> We have in the court cards, so we have the page, knight, queen, and king, and then we keep going. And again, I think if you're really into the Tarot de Marse, especially if you want to start learning it because of the keywords, I think this is a really beautiful deck. The artwork is really pretty, especially if you're drawn to that medieval um, aesthetic. Okay. So that's the Medieval Feathers Tarot. And as I mentioned, it is quite big. Um, this is the back. <coughs> really not into the backs. <laughs> I know that might sound like really... I don't, whenever there is writing on the back, I, yeah, I just think it's, it's such a shame to have writing on the back, but that would be the one thing that I definitely don't like about it. Um, but yeah, so this is, this would be good for people who want to dive into that system. Okay. This is the Earth Mother's Oracle Guidance from Guardians of the Animal Kingdom by Linda Bell. And Again, like the box is always really, really well done. This one doesn't have an insert, but that's okay. This is how Blue Angel usually had their, their decks was just like kicking around. <laughs> but the boxes are really, really, really good quality. So definitely can't complain there. The back, let's have a look at the back first. I really like that it's very simple, very bright. It is not edged. So for those people who don't like gilding, um, you do not have to worry. This is the guidebook, which is for colour, which is something that uh, Blue Angel does with their books. And I like that you can quickly look it up in the card messages. This is so bright. I've actually looked through this and uh, I think this would be so great to work with for inner child work, um, healing the mother wound, protection. There's animals in here, animal symbolism. Uh, yeah, I think this would be a great one for kids as well. So how to use the deck, card layouts. And the yearly one. And then we move into the meaning. And in the meaning we have a keyword, the name of the actual earth mother, um, the meaning and an affirmation for each one. And so I believe, the, here we go, author and artist, this is by uh, Linda, who's done both in New Zealand. So if you like this, this deck, you can go in and support, support her. There are, oh, that was, <clears throat> there are 45 cards in this deck. And look how cute they are. So we have these portraits of these earth mothers with all of these animals from different regions. So this would be, you know, I'd say like somewhere in South America. 
And then we have some of them that are completely fantasy, which I absolutely love. Like, who doesn't love a fantastical um, animal? So we've got Bun Buns, Power, and all the animals are connected to the keyword and the actual Earth Mother as well. So really cute. It is multicultural, which I love. I mean, look at this little, that was so cute with a little ladybug. And I think this would be a great deck to work with, with for children and for younger, younger readers. It's gentle. Um, I think the animals are something that a lot of kids can really connect with. I love the shark. I'm going to start moving a little bit faster through. <clears throat> but when I was looking through them, I just thought, like, this is all New Zealand. Like, I just thought, oh my gosh, this is just like the sweetest deck, Australia, um, for, you know, fairy tales here and Scarlet, for, for kids who are looking for a really gentle deck. Let's see, Yorta. I just think it's so, so pretty. The cards are a lovely laminate, matte laminate. I really like this finish. So I definitely think this is a deck that you could work with all for kids. So I'm not gonna go through all of them because this would be video would be like forever, but <laughs> the dinosaurs. So that is the Earth Mother's Oracle and it's really, really so beautiful. And yeah, if you've got kids, I think this is definitely a good one to work with. The next deck is the Great Goddess Oracle by Lucy Cavendish and artwork by Jake Baddenley. I think I'm saying that right. And oh, this is a really interesting deck actually. So it's 42 cards with a guidebook, same box situation, which is lovely and sturdy. Here's the guidebook, which the gilding. And again, it is or color and this deck has got the goddesses but they have different aspects of the goddess okay so when you look through the so this information here obviously lucy knows her stuff very very well so she's done a really good job with the introduction is that you have both sides or two different sides of the actual goddesses like this is amazing like I think with this if we keep going keep going <laughs> so like look how much you're getting in the actual beginning here like quite a lot like there's card layouts there's so much so really we don't start getting into the goddesses until page 70 like so you're getting quite a lot of information in this and the card meanings have got um, a blessing and an aspect. This is Anana, so her blessing maiden. She is the lady of honey and rapture. And then her second one is her, is her maiden invocation, and it's calling on Anana for strength, vigor, and daring. So it's got different ways that you can actually work with the goddess. And we're going to look through now um, the the actual uh, cards. I love the back with this traquetra and beautiful gold here. Oh, there's the first one. <laughs> so we have Anana in both her, her two cards. So her blessing and her invocation. So this time I'm going to show you. So this would be different ways in which you can work with her. And it shows you if she's maiden, mother or crow, crone. And she also has the different um, keywords. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. I'm not going to do that. So the mother and her blessing and invocation, lady of comfort, creativity, rebirth and renewal. So this would be really cool for people who are looking for a, a goddess deck to actually work with different aspects of the goddess and explore that. And I think this would be a beautiful deck for, you know, for that journey the artwork is so stunning. Hopefully you can see this artwork. It's so beautiful. It's like a painting on 
you know, an ancient um, vase or like a wall or a tapestry. It's really, really beautifully done. Love Hecate. She's really gorgeous. Saraswati. I mean, a lot of these goddesses I know quite well from working with with them and also with um, my own, I think I'm just going to do this now, uh, my own goddess deck as well. So Kali, beautiful, I love this one with the, um, the owl, of course. <laughs> so these goddesses are from uh, around the world, okay, so, and many of them you all know if you've worked with goddesses before, like Keridwen is well known. And this might also be something where you're learning about a new goddess. We love that. The Norns, that's gorgeous. Freya. And Hell. So there's 42 cards all together. And as I mentioned, I think this is going to be a deck where you can really work with the goddess. I think that's what it's meant to, to be used for. So it's going to be really, really interesting. Let me know if you have this deck and if you work with it and what you think. Next, we have the Soul Mirror Oracle, See Yourself by Sunshine Connolly, artwork by Anna Nervaez. And this I'm really, really excited for. I saw this one on a couple of people's channels and then I was like, I have to go get that immediately. So we have the guidebook. Again, it's in color. Uh, each I haven't actually looked through this deck yet. I just got it and was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so each one we get intuition, confused or clear. So that might be if you do reversals and then some information and some reflection questions. And at the beginning, I don't think there's too much at the beginning, but we have the card messages, so easy to find. And then mirroring, so talking about self-reflection. Okay, different ways that you can work with it. Journaling, card layout. So just a little bit of information and then we jump into the cards. The cards have a gorgeous gold edging and the backs are non-reversible, which I mean, I, I always like a reversible back, but that's just myself. And this seems to be this, the standard size now for all of the um, decks for Blue Angel. And honestly, I just loved that this was like, I mean, she looks very like Stevie Nicks and thank goodness this is in alphabetical order so because there are no numbers on there that makes it easy to find so alignment and we have the two meanings I just loved how um oh, it's so beautiful now this aesthetic I keep knocking that plant this aesthetic is just gorgeous I love that it's like dot work it almost reminds me of my tattoos because I've got the dot work a lot of dot work on my tattoos so I think this will really uh, speak to a lot of people, especially those drawn to feminine energy. I just, yeah, I really, really like it. Some of them have this white background. Some of them have a black background. I think uh, probably younger people as well will really, really enjoy this. But I think it is just like, yeah, really, really gorgeous. I'm looking forward to actually um, doing some readings with it to see how it actually reads. But even without the guidebook, I can I know I can get a lot out of the image itself and the keywords. With Oracle decks, I'm a lot less, um, I guess, worried about there being keywords because it's a little bit more open on my tarot decks it's not one that I, I love that. not one that I love a ton love that card portal wow potential so this is the first time I've looked through the whole thing really really 
pretty. Oh, I love that unsticking sound. Oh, this is like one out with the, the only one with like that brown background. Gorge. Yeah, I really, really like this aesthetic. So we're going to see how this, uh, this works. But I, yeah, the Soul Mirror Oracle. Beautiful. The next deck from Blue Angel is Norse Goddess Rune Oracle. And I love Sharon McLeod's work. I have known of her for a really long time in Australia. And I was really thrilled to see her work in a rune deck. So again, we have a really decent guidebook here. They always do a really good job of the guidebooks. And we have the contents, acknowledgements, intro, the origins. And this is a feminine representation. Even though when you look into um, the runes, um, they actually are in sets of three and they're not all necessarily <clears throat> associated with goddesses. So this is an interesting perspective and whether you think this is something that you'd work with because of that or not, then, you know, that's completely up to you. But I, I do love that this is a runic um, card deck. So there's some spreads here and... Big ones. I have never really worked with very large spreads with runes. I'd love to hear from you if you have. And then we go into the actual cards and the runes. So Fehu, uh, Freya the Goddess, Portable Wealth, Abundance and Finances. And then there is a little um, blessing here and then the law and then the divination meaning. So you're getting quite a bit in these cards. So let's jump into them. They have this beautiful red edging. It's like a burnt red, which is really, really beautiful with the tree of life on the back and some knot work. And I really do like that they have got the four runes on each side and then we've got the keywords as well. So if you're learning runes, then you can, um, you know, find this and use this information really easily. And then we have it um, Merkstaif or whether or, or um, reversed. So for rune is reversed, what it may mean. So you get these both of these perspectives with each one of them. Except for there is definitely one where you don't. <laughs> um, Isa. And so this is going to make it really, really easy if you're working with runes and you want to just have a really quick yes or no as well you're not having to really worry about the orientation of the rune because it's going to tell you so this can be a, a good way of also studying and learning the runes i guess it's not really reverse right because this one it's uh going one way or the other but here like gabo or gibbo is you can't it's across no matter how you kind of cast it. So that's going to, that's one of them where it's not the, um, there is no Merc Stave. That's another one. And another one. And Isa, the same. Jera, the same. So as you can see, not all of them have that. So you may also just want to take out the, the Merc Stave um, actual cards if you just want to work with the the runes as it just being like runes but i do like that you have both options and keywords for both of them i really love that one so these i'm nearly done with all of these ones i just wanted to show you because this isn't a huge deck yeah. Again, it's got that lovely finish. Um, and this is the Norse Goddess Runes Oracle. The final deck is the Medicine Heart Oracle by Alana, Alana Fairchild. And this is artwork done by whom? Let's see. I would have thought it would be on the actual uh, the artist. This is, oh, she's from Quebec. This is Sophie Wilkins. Amazing. Many of us know um, Alana. 
from a lot of her work before. Look at this guidebook, guys. It is hella chunky. So there is a lot of information with each one. So, yeah. Beautiful. I have a feeling, though, that this is kind of like artwork that... Um, Sophie has created and it's been turned into an oracle deck and the reason I say that is because some of the cards are landscape and some of them are portrait but they're so beautiful I don't think I'm going to care look how gorgeous this is so let's have a quick look in the guidebook so we have how to use the deck and then the actual cards introduction about shamanism okay so what makes a shaman so there's quite a lot of information in here. So I just want to make sure we're not spending too much time. Okay. And then different readings on a mat, card, card reading. So one card, three card, how to use the deck. So um, it looks like most of this is actually the card meanings themselves, which means you get quite a lot of information. So for each one, you get a little bit of information here, like a general vibe, and then talking about the actual medicine. There's a lot in here. So Alana has written a huge amount. And then we have the healing process. That's interesting. So there's a lot, lots and lots and lots. So I think um, it's going to be really interesting to go through this deck and actually work with it. This is the back and it's not reversible, but it's got owls on it. So <laughs> I'm not going to be too mad at that. Uh, it's not edged. So it's been, some of them have been edged and some of them haven't like with the gilding. But let's look through these cards. This one is beautiful. This is the title card. And I got this deck as well because I thought it would work really, really well with the um, Sacred Rebels. And you can tell, right, that, that this is um, different artwork that has been turned into an Oracle deck because you've got different layouts, different, um, different almost uh, techniques. Uh, you can tell that there's a progression in the, the artist's skill as well. But it is really, really beautiful. Not into humanoid animals, though. So I think this one's going to be one of these decks where it's like initially... I really, um, that's the back there, really enjoyed the aesthetic of it, but I'm going to have to see how it actually reads because um, it's going, yeah, it's going to be interesting because it is gorgeous. This is like having a miniature art gallery of the artist's work and Alana has written a lot of information uh, in the book so I think maybe that's going to be where the juice of it is if that makes sense ah oh, this upside down thing is okay I'm gonna I'm just gonna do it An interesting perspective. So some of them, yeah, it's kind of a little, for me, it, this feels a little all over the place. I wasn't expecting this to feel as disjointed as it is. I don't know, is that just me or is it because of the orientations are all over the show? And the art is kind of a little bit all over the show as well. Or am I just being a complete judgmental cow? Like, you can tell me. I really like that card. Oh, and look at the toilas. So cute. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to see how this works because it's feeling a little 
a little disjointed or a little even though it's the same art, it's a little incohesive. So I would love to hear whether you have this deck, but this is the Medicine Heart Oracle. I would love to hear from you if you have one of these decks or more than one. Um, and if you've been enjoying working with them, which one? And let me know in the comments below. Remember, comments are free, likes are free, and it helps my channel out a lot. So thank you so much in advance. And I will see you next time.